What's good? Today I wanted to do a quick story time just to, um, you know, I wanted to speak on something. So back when I was doing a lot of recording, I used to have sessions almost on a daily basis. There was one session in particular, it must have happened in 2016. One session in particular that I remember, um, it wasn't a good session. It wasn't great. Uh, there was a song for a particular project I was working on and there, were, there, were more than, there was more than one artist on the song. So we got into studio, we did the initial conceptualization. People already had their words. Some people had their words, some weren't ready, right? So me as the engineer sat there and I waited for people to go to record. So the first person was ready, they jumped in, um, they started recording, they finished everything. Second person did the same thing. The third person was a singer and she was super slow. Super slow in that she didn't have anything ready but over and above that there was a whole process that she had and um, I don't like just putting it down to people you know behaving like divas but there was a lot that happened uh, there was alcohol involved and the person wasn't 100 percent they were also they also I don't know they, there was a weird dynamic between them and that person the particular singer and the other artists and I didn't understand it I was again I was just the engineer just there doing my job um, the other thing is that when the engine, when that singer was in there with me, they kicked everybody else out the room, and it was just me and them. And the way sh she behaved while I was there with her was it was almost as though I wasn't in the room. Um, she put on roll on, sprayed herself again, applied makeup all while I was there, and then she started saying certain things to herself. And then I sort of I sort of asked like, are you ready to go? Like, can we start? And I saw the agitation in her face, almost like, you know, well, why the hell are you speaking? Oh, it's not your time yet. Like, understand that I'm here to do what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it the way that I'm going to do it. And there's nothing you can do about it. So, cool. Eventually she was ready. And she says, okay, I'm good to go. And then she's like, can I please record with uh, reverb on my voice? I was like, are you sure you want to do that? She's like, yeah, no, no, I must hear it with reverb. I think she wanted me to add autotune, but I was like, mm, we're not going to do that. So I added reverb to the input, which effectively meant that it was tied to the vocal. I couldn't remove that reverb. And she asked me to add a lot of it. I'm, I'm sure there's a way. I, I know there's a way to do it without it actually being on the recording. Anyway, I remember doing it. I remember thinking to myself, this is so frustrating. And I think after one or two takes, I made another comment. I think it was like, do you want to do another take or something like that? And she lashed out. She said, you engineers always want to rush the process you guys don't you know if you guys you always want to do these things just let us artists just be almost as though there was a, i don't know there was a there was a, a tension from the beginning and i knew that anything that i said after that point would have just been you know would have just been you know whatever looking back on that moment now maybe 10 years on it's probably just under 10 years maybe eight or so years since that happened looking back at that moment I probably would have either walked out, nah, I would have kicked her out. I would have kicked out the session and said, what the hell's going on? Sp brought the other artists in and said, what are you guys doing? This is not going to work. Um, I would have said, we're just going to record. I would have stopped them from adding reverb to their voice. They, need they needed to hear. They weren't the best singer. They were not the best singer. And I think that's why they wanted to hear reverb while they were singing. So I would have told them, scrap that. We're actually going to nitpick your voice we're going to criticize not criticize it but we're going to critique it and make sure that you have the best recording here and you know people say you know if you went back if you could go back is there anything that you could change about that particular incident now in hindsight sure also i hold more leverage than i did back then back then i was desperate for sessions i was desperate to get artists into studio i was desperate for just any sort of publicity to the studio and this was a good opportunity for that so i kind of just had to bite the bullet and just keep quiet as all of this unfolded. Yeah, but I think that the takeaway is, you know, I sort of have to understand why you're doing what you're doing, when you're doing it, um, as the engineer, and I suppose as the artist as well. You're gonna be asked to do some weird things on your come up, but sort of don't lose yourself too much um, and don't take it too hard too much because thinking back on it, I think maybe a week or two afterwards, I was still very angry at that particular artist. And I was angry at the entire group. I was angry at the situation. I was angry at myself for allowing that to happen. But many years down the line now, I see all of those people. I see their careers and I'm like, it makes sense why you are where you are. And it's not me saying, ha ha ha, look at you. But it is sort of me just saying, look, 
you weren't serious back then you weren't nice in general you just weren't a great person to be around back then it's probably hasn't changed now and you know this is what it is um so i uh, now i take things with a pinch of salt when people say certain things in the studio and people behave a certain way um i take a lot less i take a lot less garbage from people um but again that's all because of experience in the industry um, i've done a little bit more than i had done back then um, I'm older myself as well, so I'm, I won't take nonsense the way that I used to take nonsense. Um, and it's all just helped me just be more peaceful in the studio. This is my space. Um, I think back then also it was a thing of, this is my space, but you can use it whichever way you want to. You know, having people coming into the studio, I think one or two people smoked in the studio, not this studio, my own last studio. People smoked in the studio. Um, people, they did terrible things. I'll elaborate on them in some of the, uh, my later videos, but having the studio here, it's like a sanctuary and I treat it as such. It is, it's messy a lot of the time, but I'm doing a lot of things, but it's my space and I get to treat it the way that I want to. And that's with care, love, respect. I maintain whatever it is that I can in here. And I think that is the one thing that I would tell past me is that despite all the things that happen here, try and control the sanctity of the space. Try and keep it as much of your, your holy ground as possible. Uh, yeah, it needs to be a very, very, you know, very, very clear cut decision that you make even before the session starts. Because when you're in it and it's vibes, it becomes difficult to just be like, hey, get out. Or no, we're not doing that. Or no, we're not going to do that. Or getting people and rallying them together and saying, okay, guys, we need to start recording. Or we need to start working. As the engineer, you sort of are the officiator of the thing, you of the, of the session. You are the one who has the control over what gets tracked, how it gets tracked, um, who gets to track um, their vocals. You are the one who is you're also catering. So you need to make sure that everybody's in top form. Um, so you're sort of managing the whole situation. You are the person, you are like the concierge as well. You are telling people where to go. If they need the bathroom, they need to go that way. If they need this, they need that. If they need water, there's water over here in the corner. They want tea, coffee, let's make a plan for it. Um, if there's any issues that happen, someone drops a glass or a mug or cup and there's a mess, you are the one who knows where the broom and the mop and everything is to go and clean that up. So that's the role that you play. But in doing all of that, you aren't the help. You're not, you're not a random worker in a place. This is your studio own it um, do what you need to do and affirm that for the people that are there own it and you don't have to be aggressive just need to be firm um, and i think that's the main thing that i would tell past me yeah so if you have any weird studio stories please share them i, well, I always laugh when i see what other people had to go through because i always thought it was just me but i know all engineers all tracking engineers all music producers i'm sure even artists have to go through really weird situations and sessions let me know i'd really be keen uh, on, on seeing and reading in the comments uh, until the next video peace